So when I got my first Bob Gibson card at the Nash Creek Schools convenience store in 1972, I brought it home and showed my father because it was a very impressive representation of who was some considered the best pitcher of the 1960s. And my dad said, well, that's all well and good, but I have a story to tell you. And the story was about Game 7 of the 1968 World Series between Detroit and St. Louis. Now, St. Louis had bet the Red Sox in the 67 uh, World Series. The 68 World Series seemed to be going out of uh, St. Louis's way. But after taking a 3-1 lead in the series, uh, Detroit clawed all the way back, setting up a Game 7 confrontation in St. Louis's home park on October 20, 1968. Now, uh, Mickey Lolich, who was the star pitcher for Detroit that playoff, Danny McLean was ineffective, took on Bob Gibson, and Gibson had already uh, had uh, two great games and had accumulated 27 strikeouts in, uh, in those two contests. Now, uh, the game itself was scoreless until the sixth inning, and uh, then in the seventh, uh, Lolch and Gibson, uh, who uh, were very effective all the way, way through, it was Gibson that blinked first. Now, uh, in the uh, top of the seventh, uh, Gibson surrendered two out hits to Norm Cash and Willie Horton. Uh, Jim Nortra then hit a hard smash to deep center, where Kurt Flug, who uh, won numerous uh, Golden Glove awards in his career, misjudged it and briefly started in on the ball before turning around to go back. The ball one hopped a warning track, two runs that were scored, and Northrop wound up with a triple, and Lolich had all the runs he would need in the contest. Now, Flood was later criticized by some who believe he would have caught the ball had his first steps been back instead of in. But Northrop uh, later said in published reports, the hit was 40 feet over Flood's head. He never had a chance to catch it. However, his teammate Denny McLean claimed in his 1975 autobiography that Flood, quote, blew it. Orlando Cepeda, in his 1998 autobiography, Baby Bull, asserts that Flood would have caught the ball had he not misjudged it. But in the October 29, 1968 issue of the Sporting News, both Flood and uh, classic manager Red Shondice indicated they would have expected a normally sure-handed outfielder to catch such a ball. By starting in, Flood had the boat reverse direction and then regaining acceleration. He then slipped on the wet grass before recovering his speed. And by that time, the ball was well behind him. Uh, freehand to double in Northrop, and at the top of the ninth, Don Wirt added an RBI single. Now, the contest uh, going into the uh, ninth inning uh, was pretty well going the way Detroit wanted. But the Cardinals did get a run back in the final inning on a Mike Shannon homer. But that was all Lolich uh, needed as he pitched his third complete game. The final out of the series was recorded when Bill Freehand caught a pop foul off the bat of Tim McCarver. Then, uh, ironically, Gibson struck out eight in the losing cause, giving, a, giving him a record 35 strikeouts by one pitcher in a World Series. But Lolich had the last laugh as he was named World Series MVP. Now, this is the last World Series game to date to feature complete games from both starting pitchers. But uh, besides Kurt Flood, there was another uh, uh, major controversy during the seven-game series. Uh, now, Dow Maxville was never a strong hitter for the Cardinals, and he showed that in the series. He broke a world record by going hitless in 22 at-bats. Now, uh, it could have been a fungal, uh, a single, whatever, but especially uh, Game 5 and Game 6 that were, uh, you know, Game 6 was a blow for Detroit, 13-1, but uh, Detroit's 5-3 win uh, because of their big 7th ending in uh, Tiger Stadium on October 7th really told the tale. But Lourdes was so on in this series, but like I said, Danny McLean winning 30 games just a little before uh, was, uh, you know, was thought to be the big, uh, the big player. Now the composite box, ser box series, Detroit outscored uh, St. Louis 34 to 27, even though the Cardinals outhit Detroit 61 to 56. 
and Detroit won the series as well despite making 11 errors in the field. Now for that World Series, total attendance was nearly 380,000 with an average attendance of 54,000. The winning share was 10,937 with the loser share $7,079. So uh, Dal Maxwell getting paid uh, that money for doing nothing in the uh, series. Uh, maybe should give the money to charity or the money to Bob Gibson. I never, I've never seen Bob Gibson before or after that make any major mistakes in any major game he played in. If anything, he overachieved. And if you look at his World Series and other, uh, you know, league stats, that ERA of 1.12, which you will never see again, even in a, a shortened 30-game starting season now. Gibson was, uh, again, the best pound-for-pound -pound pitcher of his generation, and he still lost. That's why ba baseball is uh, not what you call a game that can be understood. You know, uh, why did the Cardinals win the 85 World, uh, lose the 80, 85 World Series? Why did later on, uh, you know, uh, lose World Series championships? How come the Expos never made it to the World Series in 81? We're the best team in the National League. And you never know in the playoffs. You're only playing a five or seven game series, and anything can happen. And you know, But there is a YouTube version of the full game on the internet. And it's the CBC TV broadcast of the game, complete with car commercials and CBC style ads. It's, it's quite interesting. And it has, a, it's, it has a very high definition black and white feel. Should take time to watch it because the seed increases of both teams, it was a chess match anyway. Have a good evening. Stay safe. Bye.